Hey, how y'all doing? This is Mongo Slade, and today we're going to talk about WCW 2000. Now, we're not going to talk about WCW 2000 in a way where I'm going to break down any match or any event. What I want to talk about WCW 2000 is about the patterns of behavior in WCW 2000, the presentation, different things like that. Because there is a particular wrestling writer who just compares everything to WCW 2000. And I think that he kind of counts on you never having actually watched WCW 2000 because there is nothing within modern wrestling uh, that is that bad. Okay. For, for starters, WCW 2000 and let's be clear. WCW 1999 is almost just as bad and WCW 2001 just as bad. So just saying, like, Oh, it's WCW in 2000. It's no, it's WCW from 1999 to when it got taken off the air. All that shit is bad. Okay? It's bad stuff. It's bad. All bad. But what's going on in wrestling today? It's the it's almost it's not the exact opposite, but in WWE terms, it's usually the exact opposite of what happened in WCW two thousand. So what was going on in WCW two thousand that was so bad? Well you had excessive swerves. Uh, so you will have constantly heel turns for no reason. I was just watching Starcade 2000 and then you had, you had Buff Bagwell run to the ring. Well, the Goldberg Lex Luger match. Uh, the match is about, uh, Lex Luger disrespecting, uh, Buddy Lee Parker who trained Bill Goldberg and about, you know, Lex Luger wanting to beat up Goldberg or whatever. So before the match, Lex Luger hits Buddy Lee Parker from behind Buff Bagwell, who was doing, uh, a announcing job throughout the night. He is, you know, he's playing a baby face. Oh yeah. And he actually runs Lex Luger off as Lex Luger attacks Buddy Lee Parker. Later in the match, uh, Buff Bagwell comes to the ring with Buddy Lee Parker as Buddy Lee Parker comes to the ring to get revenge on Lex Luger. This match is no disqualification, by the way, because almost all of the matches are no disqualification, but we'll get there in a second. So then you have, uh, you, you have Buddy Lee Parker come to the ring and you know, then Lex punched him out, you know, like just knocked him out with like some brass knuckles or something. And then, you know, uh, Buff Bagwell gets involved and Buff Bagwell is going to do the blockbuster on, on uh, Lex Luger because I think Lex Luger hit him or something like that. He overshoots Lex, does the blockbuster on Goldberg. And then he visibly sells like, oh, no, what a, what a horrible thing I've done. And then he rolls out of the ring and Lex Luger gets a two count. And then Buff Bagwell interferes on behalf of Lex Luger turning heel on Goldberg. Goldberg still won the match though, by the way. And I just said to myself, like, what the fuck was that? Like, what was that? Like, if you just going to turn heel, just turn heel dog. Like earlier in the night, they did a, a, another quote unquote swerve where you had uh, Reno and big Vito. Somebody was paying chronic to break up this family and we don't know who it is. And then Chronic led everybody to believe it was the girl outside the ring. When it was really Vito's own partner who paid Chronic to beat up the family. And then the guy pins his own partner. And I was just like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Really? Really? What the fuck? That was stupid. Excessive swerves. You also, in the same show, same show, you got Bill DeMott who's going by the name General Rection. I don't even know what the fuck that means. He's beefing with Chavo Guerrero. They're both in a fucking military stable. It's stupid shit. Then you got uh, uh, Shane Douglas is trying to cheat. He's trying to hit Bill DeMott with a, a gold chain or something like that wrapped around his fist. Uh, Chavo Guerrero and Bill DeMott have been arguing. Chavo Guerrero comes to the ring. Snatches up the gold chain as Shane Douglas was knocked down before he was able to use the chain. And then he tosses the chain to Shane Douglas. And they have been arguing. So everybody's like, oh, no, Shane Chavo is turning on, turning on General Rection, a.k.a. Bill DeMott. And then Chavo tells the ref, oh, look, Shane Douglas has a gold chain. Referee turns around. Shane Douglas has the gold chain. Shane Douglas gets disqualified. So, in other words, Chavo helped Bill DeMott. And I just said, what the fuck? Okay, like, really? Why, why, why is this? Why is this? Why are you doing so much? Like, why are you doing so much? 
You don't have to do that much. And for starters, like you don't need to have excessive swerves. Like you can't tell a story if there is no consistency, right? They did a similar swerve. Uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Team Canada. Hacksaw Jim Duggan, you know, renounces his American citizenship to join Team Canada, but he doesn't really want to. He's supposed to hit Ernest the Cat Miller. I don't know why they were obsessed with Ernest the Cat Miller in 99, 2000. He was on every fucking show. And then he's, oh, he's trying to hit him with the two by four. He decided not to hit him with the two by four. He clotheslined him instead. And then he clotheslined Ernest the Cat Miller, knocked him down. Ernest the Cat Miller submits to Lance Storm's one leg of Boston Crab, and then Lance Storm beat up Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Who helped him win? And I just like, okay, <laughs> we, we're not saving anything. We're just going to do everything right now. Everything smashing together is just no consistency. And then we'll try to explain it later. We just have to do something right now. We have to explain it later. There's nothing like that happening today. You know, there is no, there, how many, like, there is some, some botched heel turns today, like the Kalisto heel turn, where it seemed like Kalisto was going to turn heel on Lucha House Party, then they did the draft, now Kalisto's back to being a babyface, you know, but Kalisto's not on TV acting, he well, you also had the Chad Gable thing, where he was a heel face for a little, for a little while, but there is no, there is no excessive swerving, okay, there is no, uh, you thought things were going to go one way, whoop, and that, that's, you know, it's going like a completely different direction for like apparently no reason. There is none of that stuff. Uh, there was excessive garbage matches. Everything was some flavor of garbage match. La you had a ladder match, bunkhouse brawl, uh, and a uh, hardcore match, no disqualification match, all on one card. It's like, how many different fucking, har how many different, like, are you going to have any normal matches? No, there was no normal one-on-one -on -one who was the best man going to win match. There was none. It was everything with some flavor of no disqualification, some flavor of no count out, some flavor of hardcore garbage bullshit. And it was like that in WWE too for, for a long time where there was, they let start letting that hardcore division. They started letting all those hardcore matches like peripherate throughout the show. There would be multiple gimmicks on like, like WWE does it today in terms of like extreme rules or TLC or you may have you know multiple gimmick matches on pay-per-view, but like not er all the time. There's usually going to be some type of one-on-one, -on -one, mano y mano, who is the best man in this situation. There's going to be some of that stuff. There's almost none of it in WCW 99-2000. You know, it's everyone has to be, it's, it's all a hundred swerves. And the next thing I got is excessive run-ins. Like you had people running in all the time. There was always somebody interrupting the match. Always. I don't think a match ended clean that I've seen in 99 or 2000 yet. I just, it's just unreal. The amount of other people like, yes, I do. Com and this is where I, I, I kind of complain. Like WWE, they treat certain matches like they operate in a, in a, in a, in a realm where there are no other people, you know, <laughs> you know, sometimes like, Sometimes a run-in makes sense. Most of the time a run-in does not make sense. But wrestling in 99, 2000, WWE did it too. They had a run-in and an hour-long Iron Man match in WWF. Like, could you imagine them doing that today? That you had an Iron Man match that's ended in disqualification because a bunch of fucking guys decided to run in and a dude on a bike rolled down the goddamn ramp and choke slammed the dude. And, oh, yeah, that's how he wins. What? What the f no people would have pitched a bitch like that doesn't know just because you were 16 when it happened doesn't mean it was good. It was trash. A lot of that stuff from that from that era. Absolute trash. All those run ins, all of the stupid weapons, all the stupid weapons matches. It was so fucking dumb. And then you had then you had dumb stakes, stupid stakes. The constant commissioners matches. Who's going to run WCW? We're going to decide that in a match. How many fucking WCW commissioner matches did they have? 400? 500? It just kept bouncing back and forth between motherfuckers nobody wanted to see anyway. Ernest the Cat Miller and Mike Sanders. And like, nobody cares about any of these people. Why would I, why do I, why, why is the Ernest the Cat Miller in, in, in the position to be the commissioner anyway? Who gives a fuck? Fuck him. You know, and he was on every fucking show. 
there is nothing that <laughs> there's nothing that stupid going on today. You know, I, I, I can't. What's the worst gimmick match to have? You know, the worst stakes, let's say, because I don't want to say like I for an eye or anything like that. But what's like a dumb stake? You know, I can't tell you what a dumb stake is, you know, because I can't think of any like WWE. If anything, they have no stakes. You know, you just constantly have matches that, you know, that, that where, where there's no progress. In WCW, there was, they were at, they, the matches had stakes. There would be a title on the line or something on a pole or, you know, the winner gets something, the loser gets something, you know, something happens to the loser. But then they'll try to finagle their way out of it or it'll just be so stupid that nobody really cares in the end anyway. And they just undo it the next day because it's a constant swerve and swerve, swerve, swerve. It's all about power. And nothing matters. Okay, so that was so that's really dumb. It's really dumb to compare it. You do the renounce your citizenship match where if Hacksaw Jim Duggan loses, he has to renounce being an American citizen. And then he loses via swerve, of course, because someone swerved him. He had to announce his, he had to renounce his American citizenship. And I just said, OK. <laughs> OK, whatever you say, bro. That's that's a stupid stake, man. That's a stupid stake. Like, it it's, it's sure is meaningful for Hacksaw Jim Duggan, who is a patriotic character. It may, at the time, have been uh, interesting. But looking back on him, like, man, that was just dumb. It's just stupid. I beat you. You have to renounce your citizenship. I'm like, what? 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 And this all, of course, prevents long-form storytelling. You can't have long form stories if you're doing constant swerves. If you're never actually proven who the better man is, if there's always run ins, then there's always somebody moving and running and always somebody else to keep track of. You have to keep track. You can't really enjoy what's going on. For starters, there ain't much to enjoy because there's just so much shit. And then there's so much, so many garbage matches with so many people yelling and jumping and flipping. And they turn the, the, uh, the cruiserweight division into, you know, nothing but white boy lucha. Which it, it killed everything that was interesting about it, you know. It was like you didn't allow baby faces to get any uh, to get any momentum. The heels didn't get a lot. Went, didn't get any, well. The heels won a lot, you know, and they were able to get momentum through cheating. But that's because it the, the situation that you created benefits heels. Your situation did not benefit the baby faces at all because there was always a hundred fucking run ins, you know. So it didn't really didn't benefit the baby faces at all. Sure. In some instances, the baby face had to overcome more than one person. For instance, like in the Goldberg example, I give you, you know, it's like, okay, buff Bagwell comes down to the ring interferes. This is, I guess the, the beginning of totally buff. And then you had, uh, Goldberg has to overcome buff and Luger. Okay, fine. Then why didn't buff just turn heel from the beginning instead of playing like, Oh no, I'm not really turning heel. Yes, I am. You know, like just turn heel, <laughs> you know, just have buff come down in there and turn heel. Like you could have done that and then run with that. But it's just, I, I, I don't understand how people can just be like, it's just like WCW in 2000. It's just like WCW in 2000. I'm like, what? Where's the hundred thousand run ins? If anything, WWE's main problem is that nothing changes from week to week. Is that you can watch raw on the be uh, first Monday of the month. And then you watch Raw on the fourth Monday of the month and you ain't missed shit because nothing happened. Nobody turned heel. Nobody won or lost the title because no titles are ever on the line. You know, the promos are too long. No story elements are being added. You know, you occasionally get punished because you're like, oh, I don't need to watch Raw. Blah. And then, you know, Mustafa Ali will turn heel or Cedric Alexander will turn heel or something like that or you know, something like that, but they don't actually do anything. That's the main problem with raw. The main, the problem with raw isn't that they book it like WCW 2000. Cause they booked it. Then something might actually fucking happen on the show. Nothing happens on raw. That's the problem. <laughs> the problem is nothing fucking happens. So when, when this person goes on about, Oh, it's just like WCW 2000. It's like, no, it's not. It's nowhere near it. Did you watch WCW in 2000 or did your audience not watch it? Because I've seen enough of this shit, especially in 99, 2000, 2001. Like I said, man, all the fucking run-ins, a hundred, like the, the hardcore division just took over the fucking company. Where there's like on Starcade 2000 alone, there was an ambulance match, a hardcore match, 
a ladder match, a no disqualification match, a um, it was some I think it was, was it a crowbar match? Yeah, it was a crowbar match. There was a bunkhouse match. That's six. That's six gimmick matches on one show. I can I couldn't I couldn't even begin to tell you how many heel turns it was. So, like yes, there was a lot of stuff happening, but there was too much stuff happening. Like you can't possibly process all that shit. Okay, like, and then also it's not, it, there's no rewatchability to it. You know, like who, like once you see us, like that's the thing about uh, movies with swerves. Like you ever seen a movie like The Sixth Sense? Like once you've seen The Sixth Sense, it loses its punch the second time you saw it, right? Because you know that the punch is coming, right? Like once you, once it's not like, you know, watching a good movie and you know the ending already. But what makes a great movie with the swerve, that kills the rewatchability of it, the swerve. Because, like, once you see the kids say, I see dead people, and you realize, like, oh, shit, Bruce Willis is dead. It's like, oh, this movie is awesome. But then you watch it again, and it's like, okay, it kind of loses its punch the second time. You know, because that you don't get that mystery, you don't get that reveal again. And that's part of the story is like part of the story is you also want the catharsis of having seen something through to the fruition without fucking swerves and detours and all this type of stuff. There was, there was no conception of one event being different from the other, you know, like star K was supposed to be the granddaddy of them all, the biggest show of the year. This is where the, the, the I was about to say the big boys play, but how was it? How was it any different from any other show? They just had some of the most garbage individuals in the world on it. And then it didn't even have all the stars on it. Like, because the, the people writing the show was more interested in writing compelling stories or whatever, they didn't, they for, completely forgot about star power. You know, there was people who <laughs> shouldn't have been on the show that was on the show. You had people chanting boring during hardcore matches because there were so many of them. So what, what is there to be excited about? That simple concept of psychology of how to format your show was lost. It's just crash, 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 jump through something, hit somebody with something. Somebody's got to turn. Somebody's going to die. Somebody's going to live. Yada, yada, yada. It's all up in your face. And it's like, okay, that's fine. But you need to slow it down. Not every match needs to be that way. You know, not every match needs to have a surprise entrance, a surprise run in, a surprise return or nothing like that. What was that show? I think I was watching where actually it was Star K99, where the varsity club was put back together. Rick Steiner, Kevin Sullivan and uh, Mike Rotunda. They were brought back together to help Hacksaw Jim Duggan and to represent the United States. And then they turned on him in the same in the same match. They turned on him. I just looked at this shit like you brought these guys out as a surprise entry just to have them turn on him literally 10 minutes later. <laughs> and some people like the shit. And I just said to myself, like, we couldn't slow burn this. We couldn't take our time with this. Like, I'm cool with the heel turn, but take your time. Tell the story of why. Like, you got the commentators trying to say, well, I guess because he wouldn't tag out. I'm like you beat up a guy because he wouldn't tag out. You you turn your back on your own country because Hacksaw Jim Duggan wouldn't tag. Oh, this is fucking stupid. Like I think that a lot of these people, man, they try to take advantage of y'all because they think y'all don't have a lot of time, you know, to sit back and watch this stuff yourself. And you don't. You know, I, I understand people don't. I, on the other hand, I I, I watch shit. You know, and then I also remember a lot of stuff. I did not watch WCW in 2000 at the time because I was not interested. But I have since the you know, since the network has come around, I've gone back and watched a lot of old stuff. That shit is bad. It sucks. A lot of WCW sucked, if we're being honest. <laughs> especially especially the years where they just decided, you know, Hogan was like, it doesn't work for me, brother, and he's not gonna work on anybody's undercard. You can't say WWE in 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017 is that bad. At at the worst thing you can say is literally nothing happens. You know, like Raw lulls you to sleep. And then shocks you with some with some stuff like, oh, the fiend's on fire. It's like, what? I was I sat here and basically fell asleep as you lulled me to death 
with shit with people having talk segments and there's nothing happening in these talk segments. And then I was guys on fire. It's like, what the fuck? You know, like that's actually a little bit better than constantly shit happening. And then you forget what happened because there's constantly more shit happening. You know, Star K 2000 had what, what, what could have been a pretty fucking good main event. See it. And Steiner could have been badass main event ruined because there was a fucking run in. And I think the match pretty much no disqualification because I'm pretty sure all the matches were no disqualification. Fucking Jeff Jarrett had hit somebody with a good, with a guitar. And it's like, <laughs> whatever, bro. If you, I don't see how anybody can watch something and be like, it's WWE 2000. I don't even say that about AEW. AEW, you know, sometimes they have too much stuff going on. Sometimes they don't have enough. That's just the, the 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 natural flow of writing TV. Some weeks are going to be dull. Other weeks are going to be up. You know, especially when you're writing long form television. Some there's going to be some lulls in the action. There's going to be some weeks where this story kind of flattens up a little bit, and then you shoot it up the next week, and then you slow it back down. That's the how the writing of The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead would have weeks and weeks and weeks of nothing happen. And then all of a sudden, a bunch of stuff happens in weeks and weeks and weeks of nothing happens. And people continue to watch it. I stopped watching it because it was nothing happens. And Raw is losing viewers because of that. Because there's weeks and weeks and weeks of nothing happens. So what happens is people look at things that don't happen and they make a big deal out of whatever did happen. So now we got people flipping out because Keith Lee lost a handicap match because it's the only thing on the show that they can remember because nothing else fucking happened on the show other than a guy got set on fire. You understand what I'm saying? Like people will remember whatever happens. If you have a bunch of shit happening, then nobody's ever going to remember that that happened. Right. It's going to be like, oh, you just did some dumb shit, but here's some old dumb shit. And there's some old dumb shit. Now I got to pick between which the dumb shit I'm going to keep in my brain. Versus you just did nothing for two hours and then something happened that I care about. And then you went back to doing nothing for two hours. So I'm just going to remember that one thing that happened, you know, and I'm gonna make a big deal out of that one thing. But WWE is not WCW in 2000. Watch one event and see if I'm wrong. Watch one event where there's straight up mano y mano, no car crash bullshit. It's... It's a despicable product. It is. It's disgusting. It's literally some of the worst wrestling I've ever seen. And uh, ECW is not far behind. But um, thank you guys for listening. Um, like this video. Uh, share this video. Uh, if you like what I do, um, follow me on Twitter, MongoSlay8. Also, feel free to send me money. I will appreciate that. Um, uh, thank you guys for listening. And I shall talk to you people later. Mm -hmm.